everybody, it's Mrs. Pound, and I'm back with another chapter in Conceptual Physics, Chapter 25 on Vibrations and Waves. Now, we're starting a new section in our study of physics. We're going to be studying sound and light, and both sound and light move in wave patterns. So this first chapter is going to have a lot of background information and definitions that we'll be using as we talk about sound and light. So make sure that you understand the concepts in these chapters because we're going to be using them for other chapters. So our objectives today are going to be to relate a drawing of a sine curve to the crash trough, amplitude and length of a wave, describe the relation between frequency and period of a wave, and describe what it is that travels when a wave moves outward from a vibrating source, and describe what affects the speed of a wave. So in the introduction, a vibration is a wiggle in time. And I have a picture of a guitar here because when you pluck the string, it vibrates or wiggles. A wave is a wiggle in space and time and vibrations produce waves. So when you vibrate, that guitar string, what it does is it produces sound waves. And if you dr drop water onto still water or drop a pebble onto still water, you will create a vibration and you will see waves. So you can hear sound waves, you can see waves in water. So let's talk about the vibration of a pendulum. And you've probably never thought of a pendulum as vibrating. But here you see a pendulum and it's a watch going back and forth. And so when we talk about a pendulum, we talk about the period. This is the time of one back and forth swing. And it depends on the length of the pendulum and the acceleration of gravity. So if we start our swing here, and we go over and back, the time it takes to do that is called the period. Now let's describe a wave. So the first thing we have to talk about is simple harmonic motion. This is periodic motion in which acceleration is proportional to the distance from an equilibrium position and is directed toward that equilibrium. Now that's a mouthful and it may sound confusing. So let's break it down. So periodic motion means that it takes a certain period of time. So we get that from uh, the previous definition on period. And if you think of a periodical, a periodical is something like a newspaper or a magazine where it comes out at a set time. Perhaps a uh, paper comes out once a day. A magazine comes out once a month. There are some periodicals that come out once a week and at different times, but it's predictable as to the time when it will come out. So that's what it's talking about is a motion that happens predictably in time, like the swinging of this pendulum going back and forth. Now it's talking about a distance from an equilibrium position. The middle is the equilibrium position. And so it goes up, back to the equilibrium position, up, back to the equilibrium position. That's all that that is talking about. A sine curve is produced by this type of motion. And this is a curve whose shape represents the crests and troughs of a wave is traced out by a swinging pendulum that drops a trail of sand over a moving conveyor belt. So imagine in your mind that instead of that watch swinging back and forth, I have a funnel that I filled with sand and as it moves back and forth, it leaves a trail of sand. And so if the paper is not moving, you just have a nice straight line on the paper back and forth. But if that paper is moving, it becomes an S shape on that paper, uh, just like in the background here. And that is called a sine curve. 
Now a sine curve has crests, like the crest of these hills. This is one of the places on a wave where the wave is highest or the disturbance is greatest. It also has troughs, and that's one of the places in a wave where the wave is lowest or the disturbance is greatest in the opposite direction from a crest. And so here we have a watering trough. They have depressions, and you can see that. We also talk about amplitude. This is the distance from the midpoint to the crest of a wave. So right here would be the amplitude from that equilibrium position, that midpoint to the crest. We also talk about the wavelength, the distance from the top of one crest to the top of the next one. So here we would have a wavelength from here to here, crest to crest. You could also go trough to trough, or you could go from this point here to this point here. It's where you have a complete up and down. So here we have a picture of one of these sine waves, and I'd like you to copy this down into your notes. And I'm going to describe what it says. You do not have to write this transverse wave part here. Uh, this is what we call a transverse wave, but we will uh, cover that later. So in this wave, we talked about the amplitude. That is the height from the equilibrium to the top of a crest. So that's an amplitude. We have a positive amplitude, and we also have a negative amplitude from the equilibrium position to the trough. We also see that wavelength labeled here, and the crest and the troughs. Another thing we talk about with waves is frequency, and this is the number of events per time measured in hertz. It's the inverse of period, and we'll give you an equation for that in a minute. Hertz is the SI unit of frequency, and one hertz is one vibration per second. So the equation for frequency is frequency equals one over period. And the equation for period is period equals one over the frequency. And what we're gonna do is we will do some problems from the book with these equations in class. Now let's talk about wave motion. The energy transferred from a vibrating source to a receiver is carried by a disturbance in a medium, not by matter moving from one place to another in the medium. And I have the picture of a flag here because this kind of, we see it waving in the air. So it's not the fact that the energy is from the flag actually moving from one place to another, we see that wave displacing the flag and the flag staying where it is in space. It does not move. And so that's that idea that uh, it does not move physically from one place to another. It stays right there. Okay, it stays right there. So it's just vibrating up and down and it's staying where it is. Wave speed. The equation for wave speed is velocity equals frequency times wavelength. So what affects the speed of a wave is frequency and wavelength. And we will again be taking a look at this in class doing some problems with this equation. So our objectives were to relate a drawing of a sine curve to the crest, trough, amplitude, and length of a wave. You should be able to label a wave. Describe the relation between frequency and period of a wave, and they are reciprocals. Describe what is it, what it is that travels when a wave moves upward from a vibrating source. It is energy, not the matter. And describe what affects the speed of a wave. That would be its frequency and wavelength. So don't forget your five questions and I'll be back with another video.